Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Please state and spell your name slowly. Eric Eppner. Eric with a C. E. P. N. E. R. Okay, you may proceed. So, I am Eric Eppner. I'm with the engineering firm of Fussell and Wheel, and our job here was to advise the town on the what is this um, the last town on the uh, accuracy, completeness, and overall um, regulatory uh, conformity with the applicant's air permit application materials. Uh, the state agency that is tasked with reviewing those materials and issuing that permit is RIDEM, the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management. The applicant has submitted three major documents in support of their project. An air permit application, which is then followed up with an air dispersion modeling report, which is then followed up with a health risk assessment. And those three documents are daisy chained on each other in the sense that the health risk assessment arrives with the results of the modeling, and modeling is predicated on the applicant's permit application, calculations, and whatnot. Um, those three documents or the whole permit application in the total was deemed to be administratively complete by arriving on or about April 26th. Administratively complete means that um, all the materials are there. The actual technical review by arriving is going to take many months. Um, the documents are very technical in nature and very large and it's just a ton of detail. Our job was to review those documents ourselves and give the town an independent third-party assessment of their accuracy, completeness, and conformity. Um, in short, the documents that were submitted to writing do contain numerous errors and inconsistencies that are still kind of waiting to be cleared up. So, writing, um, I am sure, will be back with the applicant at some point and ask them for more information. At this point, um, so we can't really say with certainty what the status of the health risk assessment or the dispersion model or the permit application are. Uh, I can say that based on my experience that once RIDA does get all the information that they need and they ensure compliance by the proposed project, that the air impacts locally will, will be insignificant because that's the permit process's ultimate goal. So, um, from a regional perspective, um, uh, the applicant's project, in all likelihood, is an improvement regionally for air quality, since it will likely supplant a dirtier coal fire plant or oil fire plant somewhere else in the region. Sorry. Incapacity. Can you say that last sentence again? I'll try. Those two plants. I didn't hear what kind of plants you're. Oh, uh, coal fire or oil fire? Fire? Coal. Coal fire. Yes. Or water fire? Oil. Oil. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, that's the status of our review process right now. We are, um, we will continue to assist the town looking at the, uh, the documents that get submitted later on. Um, I think, like I said, in likelihood, this process will carry on for um, probably 18 months at least. Why you know we'll be back and forth with the applicant to ensure that all the materials uh, need their clients. What types of information are you waiting for at the moment? Well there are there are quite a you know because the three documents were submitted over a course of time, there are some things that are inconsistent between them. The property line and the fence line have changed. We're not really sure what the fence line is, and there's modeling that is required to be done for discrete points on the fence line. So this is a very highly technical process. Uh, there were some inconsistencies in the permit application itself in terms of you know errors and calculations that need to be cleaned up, um, and some documentation that we had asked for in terms of where did certain emission emission numbers come from, and we're told from the manufacturer, but we don't actually see the paperwork from the manufacturer that documents that. So there's there's some things like that that will um, right away require that. Sure, you know, we'll see that at some point. Is there a uh, other plants of similar design that you use to determine whether the uh, emissions are what they 
what the design specs are. The um, I'm approaching I'm process. Process. I'm sorry. I don't know if I came across on that in my question. I, I think so. Let me, okay. I'll try to answer it and okay. you can tell me. Um, the applicant is using a combination of predicted emissions. Some are provided by the manufacturer, guaranteed by the manufacturer. Okay. Some are stock EPA published numbers based on data from hundreds of other plants. And uh, that's that's typical of projects like this in the world. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rappenard, so the inconsistencies and the errors that you have found in the reports, are you communicating with DPM in what you have found so that they can point those errors and inconsistencies out to them? Today we are not. Um, if directed to the town wishes to um, share that information with DEM, then that's something we can certainly do. But right now we're not, we're, we're not, it's not our job to talk to DEM about this in this manner. I just have a couple of very quick questions. I think this is in your area. Uh, I've read that there is a potential for uh, vapor intrusion. Is that is that your area? Uh, it is not. It's not. Okay. Uh, I'm, not I'm not familiar with what you're asking. No. Uh, that's fine. So I, I'd like a fifth grade answer to this question. Very simple, because I can't get one. Uh, so I'm looking for uh, an explanation of the specific pollutants and hazardous substances that will be emitted from the plant and the potential specific dangers for the surrounding population and communities. The, uh, the emissions from this plant will uh, principally be products of combustion. Uh, products and combustion? Products, products of combustion. So, and, and are those same loops that are always created when you burn fuel? When you <coughs> comes out of your car engine, comes out of you know, the furnace in your house. So we're talking about uh, very small amounts of particulate matter because natural gas really doesn't make slip because it's ashes fuel. And um, talking about um, oxides of nitrogen, which are, it's called NOx typically. NOx, along with another pollutant called volatile organic compounds, are what creates ground level ozone, we also call smog. And then there is um, carbon monoxide in very small amounts because this is a very efficient combustion process. And carbon dioxide, which is, um, you know, which makes up uh, bulk of the atmosphere, but it's also, you know, under a lot of attention right now for climate change. Now, circling back to your question about the local impacts, um, the whole process behind um, doing the air dispersion modeling, which is a way of predicting where pollutants will impact actual places where people can breathe them. So power plants and other large emission sources are designed to have fairly tall stacks and fairly high exit velocity vertically in order to disperse emissions into the atmosphere and typically, or not typically, but it will be required to show that they have no significant impact anywhere locally. Is there a difference between burning the gas and burning the oil? Is there a separate set of uh, emission standards for each fuel? That's my first question. And then the second question is, is it an average that the plant needs to use, or is it, is it a, are they separated by a fuel type? Um, they, have, uh, they are proposing different hours of operation limits annually much smaller number of hours for oil and for gas. Oil is really um, presumed to be a backup fuel for this facility. Oil does um, make, uh, is a dirtier or a dirtier fuel, but both, all the emissions will be run through their um, oxidation analyst air pollution control system, which is required to be the best available control technology that, that can be had. So the emissions would be an average between the two. They have separate limits for um, each on an hourly basis, but on an annual basis, it's an average. You know, to come up, it's, okay. it's a sum. Okay. Thank you. 
So, uh, uh, question on the emissions testing from the facility. A new facility is tested for the first three months on a regular basis, and then it goes into duty day periods for testing by uh, prohibitions and reporting to the EPA. Or um, I am not. Sorry. I'm not sure what the exact requirements for this facility would be, but a facility of this size would be required to be tested upon startup to make sure that it meets its requirements, and then have continuous emissions monitoring for most pollutants to ensure. In a by minute, that they are in compliance with all the uh, uh, emission standards. Right, so it will be a continuous testing process then? Yes. Would that be testing through the stack at the top of the stack? Or? Usually, somewhere mid stack or the even glue that leads to the stack, it depends on the design of the, of the plant. And then that system that continuously monitors emissions is calibrated through a second stack test, like annually, usually, annually. Uh, it, it, where uh, you know they bring in manual instruments to ensure that the uh, continuous instruments are are accurate and compliance. Is there any kind of uh, circle or a distance or perimeter around the plant where it is monitored on a regular basis by the pollutants or top? <coughs> Typically, no, and I, I don't see any evidence of that being um, something that's going to be. The uh, regulating agency will rely upon the dispersion arm to make a measure um, to ensure that you know, no emissions that no emissions impact um, you know, uh, above significant levels of the Because obviously I'm more, I'm more concerned about any uh, particulate that would be reaching the ground. Particulate? Yeah. Particulate emissions are extremely low from the burden of natural gas. Okay, so anything anything that would be coming out of this that would be it's gaseous emissions. Right. Thank you. Sure. So is it better to say at this point that um, they're meeting all the requirements for air pollution or not? Their application materials state that, yes. So, they, and how do they come up with um, the standards for that? Standards are set by by item and EPA, and um, the applicant is uh, required to meet those standards. Is this a regional standard or is this a uh, local standard? This is the state of Rhode Island is the delegated authority to to issue, to review the applicant's materials and issue this permit. So 3.6 million tons of CO2 meets the standard. 3.6 million tons of CO2 meets the standard uh, in Rhode Island. Yes. So when you say the stacks are going to be um, 200 feet high, and, and the reason for that is, is to disperse uh, the pollutants over a larger area. High is the I'm sorry, high Yes. I didn't hear your answer. High something. High into the, you know, high into the atmosphere. So do, do these uh, plumes actually stay in the atmosphere? I mean, they, they, they all fall to the ground at some point. Yeah. For a great distance, yes. In fact, um, really the air, background air pollution that you have in Rhode Island, none of it really originates here. It, it really comes from hundreds and thousands of miles away. Most of the air quality problems experienced in the Northeast are created in the Ohio Valley by coal-fired power plants. So, so in your opinion, uh, and really this is, this is my point, um, will that air standard be um, higher or lower than what uh, the air in locally is right now? I mean, Burrow is kind of, you know, it's touted as having uh, good quality air. Zambrero Hospital is up here for that reason. Several other people move here because of the air quality. Uh, so do we have that uh, much more pristine air than the rest of Rhode Island? And will they be polluting our pristine air locally? No. And so by saying no, uh, assuming they will not affect our air at all. Correct. I mean, if, the, if the applicant meets all of the requirements and violations of their permit, the regulations are designed to be protective of human health and the environment, and the 
this version modeling was relied upon to demonstrate that there are no significant impacts to the local uh, to the local air quality. Okay. So in your report, another question. Uh, on the second page, it is a list of. Um, the EPA has set the National Ambient Air Quality Standards for six principal pollutants in which they are listed. And I don't see nitrogen oxide there. Nitrogen dioxide is the actual delegated, you know, the actual name of the pollutant. Um, What's nitrogen dioxide? Okay, so what, what is NOx? Okay. NOx includes mostly nitrogen dioxide, but also nitrogen oxide, which is NO, but as a group, we move it to the NOx. And all of these substances are regulated by the uh, IBM? They are, they are ambient air quality standards that are set by EPA, and then uh, RIVAL has, in turn, designed a regulatory system that EPA approves that is designed to make sure that Rhode Island maintains attainment status, meaning they are in compliance with all of the ambient air quality standards set by EPA. Thank you. I'm sorry, so one more question. Burn, burning, uh, looking at burning natural gas right now as a fuel. What happens to the standards when the switch over to diesel fuel is made, or if it's made? All the same basic principles apply. The, regula the regulations, again, you know, the permit will be issued in order to ensure that the proposed project is in compliance with whatever emission standards um, are applicable, and those standards, you know, the modeling uh, that is, is performed to ensure that there are no ambient air impacts. So they uh, just go into the total figure then? Yes. So thank you. Thank you, sir. One more question. You were talking about standards for the state. Um, is that an average? So everything in the state that pollutes or what have you, um, is that sort of you know, an average state or is that a, uh, uh, just what naturally exists? The regulations for a facility like this, that there are numerical standards for equipment at this time. And in addition to that, the, um, the project in the for um, the major pollutants is, is basically um, you know, required to install you know, the best air load control technology and the lowest limits that are technically possible. Thank you very much. Anyone? Any questions? Yes. Welcome in. Yes. Can we request that Preston O'Neill submit to DPM the inconsistencies in the areas that they have found in reports that they received from the Is it possible for the board to request that Preston O'Neill submit to DPM and the EPA the uh, inconsistencies in areas that they have found in the documents that they reviewed that were presented by New Energy? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I have met with uh, DEM and its legal counsel and offered to provide Mr. Hefner's conclusions to DEM. And they said they wanted to consider that and uh, think about whether or not they wanted us to do that at this stage and they would get back to us. So that offer has been made. Okay. Uh, and at the very least, we can certainly say that as part of our advisory opinion, we think that that should be included in us. Absolutely. So like to be incorporated now. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Elizabeth. Um, Mr. Eppner, how long have you uh, practiced and worked with Ryan? Um, I have been with Fashion Money for 21 years and have done numerous projects in the following states. And as you stated, the um, application for the rising permit was submitted. Um, is, it, um, is it normal such that there would be some back and forth and exchange between the applicant and RIDEM after the certificate of completion? Um, yes. 
Uh, if I might, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, Ryan has asked for some additional um, information and modeling from the applicant. And rather than sort of do a piecemeal, they've taken you know the comments from Rygam as well as the comments that have been uh, provided by Mr. Eppner. Those will be submitted in a, an addendum to Rygam, and we'd be happy to make that. And we'll provide that uh, to the town and if you wish to, Mr. Uh, Mr. Eppner. Thank you. We would appreciate that. Yes. I have no further questions. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Present the next witness, and the issue will be the issue of ammonia. Uh, Mr. Hebner will present. Thank you. 